Well, WrestleMania 40 is in the books. And just looking at the card, it really felt like it had the potential to be an all-timer of a WrestleMania. However, did it manage to hit the mark? More precisely, where did it land and where didn't it? Wrestling is a very subjective form of media and we're all going to have different takes and I'd love to hear what you have to say down below in the comments. I make wrestling videos all the time on here about just different topics, some of which I got right and some of which I got wrong very recently. You'll see why in a second. But yeah, without further ado, let's get to talking about WrestleMania 40. So the opening match between Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch overall I thought was just a great match. Especially considering Becky came in with a strep throat and a 102 degree fever, she really performed her best here considering the circumstances. Plus, Rhea retaining here makes a ton of sense to me. It didn't really feel like it was a time for her to drop the title, and I'm fairly sure they're going to make Rhea the longest reigning women's champion of the 21st century. Overall, really good match, right decision, really was a fan of it. Next up was the six team ladder match for the tag team titles, which overall outside looking in, it's a ladder match. There were a couple concerning spots here and there with it. Such as when Damian Priest was insisting on climbing that ladder and the referee was trying to like distract him and let him know, yo, that ladder's kind of buckling a bit. And then Miz just kind of ran up the other side and it started to buckle even more. It became a little bit concerning because I was really just scared they would get hurt. But fortunately that didn't happen. And also we got to split the tag titles, which to me was the whole point of this match in the first place. I'm also a massive fan of Theory and Waller managed to win one of the two sets. But if I do have one criticism, I kind of feel like they won them a little bit too early into the match. Like, I'm fairly sure they weren't even halfway through the runtime of the match by the time that Theory and Waller actually grabbed the titles. But then he took a really cool ladder bump, so I can't really be too upset. And of course, the Awesome Truth got their moment, and while I personally am not a huge fan of the comedy tag team wrestling when you have such a good division of really serious and good teams, it was a feel-good moment and the crowd ate it up. Now, the next match on the card I want to talk about is Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Dirty Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar. Which, considering this was a story built up for the last several months between, like, different betrayals of Santos, you know, betraying Rey, and, you know, Dominic also being there pretty much just to spite his father, seemingly, I thought this match was largely pretty fine. You know, they got to play the hits. It wasn't anything crazy insane. I'm happy that Andrade won here, but I do have a pretty big criticism here. However, I do have a pretty big criticism here, and that comes in the form of kind of how the finish went, with those guys from the Eagles, aka Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson, helping Rey Mysterio out. It just kind of felt a little tone deaf for the story they were telling. You know, I know you want to have celebrities, and obviously they are Philadelphia legends, so it makes sense that you would have them in particular. I wasn't super invested in their story, but overall as a fan, I kind of feel like a bit eh about it. And speaking of kind of eh about it, I really hate to mention this match in the way that I'm going to here, but Jimmy vs. Jay wasn't exactly what I wanted. Now, brother versus brother matches can be a bit hit or miss, right? We had Cody and Dustin over in AEW recently. We obviously had Brett and Owen way back in the day. And of course, the Hardy Brothers, which in general was considered to be probably the worst brother versus brother match. And while I don't think Jimmy versus Jay was quite that bad, I really feel like it was rather disappointing. You know, for a feud and story that we've been building since technically SummerSlam, I really don't feel like this hit the mark. Overall, the match was just fine. It was okay, but it really felt like it could have happened on weekly TV. By the time it felt like they were getting into like the second act of it, it was over, and the finish came super abruptly in my opinion. I did like the bit of character work with Jimmy trying to, you know, say I'm sorry to Jay, but that's really the only praise I have for this match. Other than that, it was a bunch of super kicks, some splashes, and overall I felt pretty whelmed by it at best. And, well, the next match, I wouldn't say I was overwhelmed by it, but I definitely found more impressive overall. Now, of course, was Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi, taking on Damage Control's Kairi Sane, Asuka, and Dakota Kai. This match was kind of your standard tag affair, but of course with, you know, three women on each side. However, I do think one thing they did incredibly well was really build up to that Jade hot tag, which didn't really come as, like, a standard hot tag where she ran in and ran wild. She kind of walked in, and everyone was just intimidated by her, and it gave her this energy that it was a little bit different than anything I was really anticipating from her initially. And really, this match did exactly what it needed to. It made Jade look like gold, and gave damage control their comeuppance, which they had been waiting for for quite some time at this point. Speaking of phenomenal, we have what was maybe match of the night next in Sami Zayn vs. Gunther. Now, anyone who's watched this channel before knows I am a massive Chad Gable fan, and while I do vehemently think that it should have been Chad Gable in this position here, it's hard to argue with the fact that the match was incredible. The story, very simple, Sammy's the underdog, Sammy's getting beat down, he gets a chance, he sees an opening, and he makes the most of it. After what felt like six power bombs, sleeper holds, pretty much everything Gunther threw at him, Sammy managed to overcome the odds. 
seemingly because Gunther was a bit too busy jawjacking at his wife to really care about the Canadian in the ring. And of course, Sammy would pick up the Intercontinental title here. We can all debate if that was the right or wrong decision in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. I'm personally on the fence about it because while I do understand that Sammy definitely deserves something like this at Mania, I'm personally really on the fence about it because I just can't get over the fact that I do think it should have been Chad. But regardless of my feelings on that, I couldn't sit and sulk on them for too long because we had the main event of the night coming up next, which was of course the massive tag team match of The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Now my first thing to note here is just that The Rock's entrance was insane. And I'm also interested as to why he finds it so interesting to light things related to him on fire at WrestleMania. But that aside, everybody in this match really played their part well. Cody and Seth looked like incredible baby faces. They played their parts honestly to perfection. The referee even did a great job just kind of selling the fact that The Rock would fire him if he acted out of line or acted in a way that would not benefit the bloodline. And this match also really served to showcase what a bloodline rules match would actually look like on night two. With The Rock and Roman pretty much consistently cheating throughout the bout, getting advantages in any way possible, and of course Seth and Cody fighting from underneath, trying to get any edge back. And while it was definitely a slow burn for like the first bit of the match with them, you know, kind of feeling each other out, you know, wrestling a more standard match, once it kind of broke into that second and third gear, I really feel like this is one of the best tag matches they've ever put on a Mania, which I know is a controversial take, but I really just loved it. It was overbooked and really honestly kind of silly, but I enjoyed like every second of it. And well, that's night one in the books, and if you were to ask me to rate it, I would probably give it a solid like 8 to 8.5 out of 10. I really enjoyed a lot of it, and the parts I didn't enjoy, I didn't find egregious outside of Jimmy and Jay. So yeah, moving on to night two. And to put it bluntly, night two made this maybe the greatest WrestleMania of all time. It started off super hot with Drew McIntyre and Seth freaking Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. And let me tell you something. That match was a lot of finishers, a lot of going for the throat, a lot of really fun heel tactics by Drew, and I loved every single second of it. Starting right off the bat with the Claymore was honestly incredible, I loved that so much. And ultimately it ended with Drew capturing the World Heavyweight Championship of course, before he decided to jaw jack at Punk, and Punk got physical with McIntyre. And that wasn't even the end, because then we finally got Damian Priest cashing in the Money in the Bank contract, which I said in my recent video, I thought they were doing a lot better with him more recently, and I had hoped that he would successfully cash in at the show of shows, so I am over the moon with that opener. Then in our technically third match of the night, we got Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits versus the Final Testaments, Karrion Cross, Akam, and Razar. It lasted eight minutes, but it was eight minutes of nothing but action. Montez Ford almost flew into the crowd. It was awesome to look at. Oh, and did I mention that Bubba Ray Dudley was a special guest referee? Because let me tell you, they broke out the tables, they broke out the kendo sticks, and they made this a really sick street fight. And the good guys won in Philadelphia. It was a really fun moment. I'm glad Carrying got the showcase, because I actually really think it made him look really nice here. And following that, we had LA Knight versus AJ Styles, which in my opinion, was maybe the weakest match of the night. However, saying it's the weakest is kind of a disservice overall, because it was still a ton of fun. AJ basically picked the leg, targeted it throughout the match, and LA Knight had to fight on one leg for a good chunk of it. There were some fun spots and transitions, like LA Knight busting out of a Styles Clash, and also AJ slamming Knight into the exposed concrete on the outside. It ended with a BFT and gave LA Knight his first win on the grandest stage of them all. Overall, a really good showcase for both men. And AJ's new theme kinda slaps low-key. Speaking of matches that slap, the US title triple threat honestly was way more fun than I thought it ever would have been. From Logan Paul coming out on the giant prime truck, to Kevin Owens coming out with the golf cart, and even going back to pick up Randy, which I thought was a really, really funny and fun. One of the big highlights of it for me definitely is the opening part where they're kinda just beating down on Logan. Before eventually Randy tries to get the better of Kevin, pull one over on him and hit him with an RKO, only for Kevin to be like, come on man, you, you gonna do this to me? Like, let's, let's just fight, let's just do this. It was loads of ridiculous fun, I loved every second of that beginning portion, but then once we got into the meat and potatoes of the actual match between all three participants, Logan got to showcase his incredible athleticism, and Randy even got to showcase some of his comedy chops, which a lot of people I feel like don't really know that he has. Such as when he kicked the Prime Bottle, aka I show speed, all the way across the floor, before hitting it with an RKO on a table after barking in his face. It was honestly such a surreal and incredibly funny moment. The finish in the match itself was honestly perfectly fine. Logan picking up the pin and retaining the title was honestly what I expected going into this. 
I'll say it once again, it was just a load of fun. And while this match was definitely a bit more tongue in cheek, the next was fairly personal with Bayley and Io Sky facing off over the WWE Women's Championship. Now, I gotta tell you right now, Bayley is my favorite women's wrestler in the world today, and she has been for a really, really long time. I'm talking back to NXT, I'm talking back to her taking down Sasha. So to see her get her moment on the grandest stage of them all was honestly something incredible for me as a fan of her. The match itself was great. Io hitting over the moonsault, loads of cool different strikes, and even basically no selling a rose plant from Bailey at one point. And I will say I might have gone worked a little bit here because Bailey has of course had a history with leg injuries, and that was the part that was worked on from the early goings of the match. And when she was holding it like super super early, I got a little bit scared that maybe she had tweaked something. Fortunately, Bailey's just a great wrestler and I was just being a mark for it. And honestly, her winning the title here was excellent, but I really, really hope next year they manage to get her paramour for her entrance. And while that match was deeply personal in a number of ways due to the overall story of damage control, the main event between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns was personal for a number of other reasons. Put it simply to you, this main event was maybe my personal favorite wrestling match of all time. And I say that partly because Cody Rhodes won, but also partly because it embodies what the silliness of wrestling can really be. The first half of the match was very similar to last year, you know, with a couple of like little extra things like a kendo stick to Cody's head here and there, and pretty much they just beat the tar out of each other for a good little while. And just when Cody started to get the upper hand on Roman, he goes for his first crossroads. Who else but Jimmy Uso comes down to hit a super kick on Cody, before Jay then comes out and then spears Jimmy off the stage into some tables, which was a great looking spot. I was terrified for them at the moment. And then once Cody manages to get the edge again, Solo Sokoa, the man who cost him last year at Mania, comes out after two crossroads this time. And then Solo and Roman hit him with a spear spike to the neck combination for honestly an incredible near fall. And then John Cena's music hit. And then after John Cena got rid of Solo, The Rock came down. The Rock managed to dispatch Cena. And then The Undertaker, of all people, showed up for... I can't even imagine why. And then it was Cody, Roman, and Seth in the ring together. Seth, the only person during Roman's reign that he didn't actually beat. And also, his famed shield brother. The one who turned his back on him. And instead of finishing the job, instead of finishing Cody Rhodes, he took aim at Seth hit him with a chair, and Cody was able to take advantage. Hit him with the three crossroads, the hat trick, put him down for the one, two, three, and Cody Rhodes wins the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. He finished the story, guys. That's all I can think about. That's all I can say. As someone who has watched Cody since the literal beginning of his career, throughout all these years, to Ring of Honor, to AEW, to New Japan, to wherever he went... This is going to be one of the wrestling moments I look back on for the rest of my life because this is everything I love about this business. Overall, Night 2 of WrestleMania for me scores like a 10 out of 10, meaning the, there was so much good on this WrestleMania card. There was some bad, don't get me wrong. And maybe this is recency bias talking, but I do think in my heart that this is maybe the greatest WrestleMania in history. But those are just my thoughts. I'm curious what you thought and if you could let me know in the comments down below. And hey ho, while you're headed down that way, if you could leave the video a like, it would help me out immensely. And maybe subscribe if you want to catch more wrestling videos like this in the future. All that being said, I need to go cry for a little while longer because if I'm being completely transparent here folks, I'm one of the Cody crybabies. As soon as he won the title, I was crying for the next 20 minutes. So with that being said, I hope you stay safe. And that was delightful. Bye bye